Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Strange Normal. My name is Bradley. We talk about the stranger things that happen in your normal life to give you a biblical understanding of what is going on. And there is a lot going on. You've heard me say that over and over again, but there really is. And it's just constantly happening. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, because you're going to want to come back for more because we got lots happening. In fact, I got the whole show for next week already. We just uh, got so much information going on that we can't, uh, we can't get it out fast enough. But before I get into it, introduce Matthew. Matthew, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. I hope everybody else is doing well. I hope we're all ready to just get into that good old-fashioned UAP deception nonsense. (laughs) I tell you, man, this is, uh, it's not ending. It's not ending. And right now they think it's ending, but it's not ending. And I'm going to tell you, We're going to jump right straight into the news tonight because that's what we do first. We got three sections in the news, in the podcast, and Hollywood tonight. The last five videos might, uh, well, they will get us uh, a little, not a ding on the channel, but they will want to uh, take away the, uh, what do they call it, Uh, ad revenue from it. But uh, I've tested them. Everything looks like it's going to go fine. Cross your fingers. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about ancient aliens tonight because that's a, did a whole show on just one episode on whether or not uh, there's aliens in the Bible. And there's a, there's a huge talk about Prometheus. Prometheus, did I say that correctly? Prometheus, yeah. Prometheus. So there was a movie out about that. We're not actually going over the movie because we're going to go over what is actually said about this uh, experience, because there's some interesting stuff about it. The whole concept about how this thing in the lore uh, gave people uh, fire, or the latest technology for the day. And we're going to wonder if it's relevant today. We're going to get further into that later. But first, the news. Oh, I'm ready. Let's see it. (laughs) Well, that didn't work. Um, tell me about yourself, That's Matthew, fine. while I troubleshoot this real quick. Oh, just anything? This is just uh, <laughs> is this like a blind date style? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> you want to know what I've been up to lately? Uh, what's going on? Well, what I've been working on uh, behind the scenes is more of those uh, video edits, and I'm working on one clip from the latest stream that we did. It is focused in on that final article about the Pope. It's going to be really good. It's taken me a little longer to put together, but that's just because I wanted to provide some additional scripture because I do go into a bit of detail about what I believe the identity of the beast is. So I mentioned Daniel, I mentioned Revelation. So I wanted to make sure I had those uh, particular verses popping up on the screen and just kind of present it in an interactive, interesting way. Uh, So I hope that everybody enjoys that whenever it comes out. I I believe I'll have it done tonight. I'm going to work on it after the broadcast and pretty much just not sleep until it's done. So it's it's gearing up to be a good one, though, and probably a good one to share with people who might not be familiar with the idea that the beast could be the papacy. Mm. Uh, Yeah, it's it's going to have a a bit of that in there for sure. That's fascinating. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to get this one out. Right on. Right on. Yeah. And uh Excellent. Very good. And I have the uh, B-roll up here. Let's jump right into it. Thank you for, you did such a good job filibustering for me. (laughs) Oh, no (laughs) problem. Sometimes that happens, but we uh, have corrected that. All right, here we go. This is from News Nation. Very interesting stuff happening right, right now politically around this UAP issue. Watch this. All right, since News Nation's groundbreaking reporting on the government's alleged UFO recovery program, some lawmakers have been crusading for the Pentagon and other government agencies to disclose more of what they know. At the center of it all is David Grush, the former Air Force intelligence officer who told News Nation exclusively about what he says he uncovered and even more intriguing what he legally cannot say because it's classified. Lawmakers were trying to learn more about those secrets, but now it all seems to have hit some major turbulence. News Nation's Joe Khalil is live in Washington for us. And Joe, this is all to do with the spending bill. Explain. 
Yeah, it's the big defense bill annually that they put forward every single year. And uh, for those following, and we've been covering it, there was an amendment to it that required pretty unprecedented disclosure by the government of these UFO or UAP files. Well, it made it into the final bill, which is good for the people pushing for that disclosure, but it was significantly watered down. So there's now some disappointment that it no longer is going to have the impact or the enforcement teeth that it otherwise would have. Congress's annual defense funding bill is in all 3,093 pages of it. Included in it, an unprecedented measure to disclose classified government records relating to UFOs or UAPs, sponsored by the most powerful man in the Senate, Chuck Schumer and Republican Mike Rounds. It would disclose records on, as the bill says, technologies of unknown origin and non-human intelligence. But the final version in legislative text doesn't go nearly as far as Schumer intended. The measure I championed with Senator Rounds would create a board, just like we did with the JFK assassination records, to work through the declassification of many government records on UAPs. This model's been a terrific success for decades. <laughs> wait, let's pause it right there. So, so wait, I'm going to go into, I'm going to put UFO cap on for a second here and, uh, and just, just think about this from a political standpoint, because I'm not going to think about it from a deception for a moment. How, 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 well, how are we doing with those JFK files, <laughs> Matthew? How, have we learned everything about those JFK files? Because it, according to him, it worked so well last time. Yeah, I think we're all just totally no. There are no unanswered questions. Very thorough, no stones unturned. Of course, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. And they did a really poor job. And I think it just led to even more questions. Honestly, there are documentaries about the JFK assassination on YouTube that will tell you more than the government ever will about what happened that day. And the same thing goes for UAP. You can go and watch our videos, check out Starfall. You can see, I, I'm sure there are other people who are talking about how there's a deception going on. It's because the government is not going to disclose. I've been on the show, gone on record before saying that there will never be a major disclosure happening from the government. And it will only be at the very last minute when... Uh, beings are materializing in front of people's eyes that they will put out a mass announcement where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, this is happening and uh, we still have some semblance of control here. No. <laughs> some semblance of a control. Yeah. yeah. They really, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, at, I am not at all surprised by this. <laughs> let's, let's see what else he says here uh, with regard to the JFK files. It should be used again with UAPs, but once again, House Republicans are ready to kill this bipartisan provision. Schumer blamed House Republicans for fighting back against his efforts for more disclosure. Two key pieces of his measure were ultimately stripped out, per our sources, influenced by the House Intelligence Committee. One would have created a 10-person panel, each chosen directly by the president, to sort through which records would be immediately disclosed. The second would have given the government full possession of all recovered, quote, non-human technology that's currently being kept by private entities like defense contractors. That, too, stripped from the bill. The risk for confusion and misinformation is high if the government isn't willing to be transparent. Sources had been telling News Nation for weeks these pieces of the bill were at risk of being cut. A bipartisan group of House members raised alarm bells, saying even their efforts as sitting lawmakers to get access to UAP information were stonewalled. If none of this exists, if this is all false, why at every turn are there people trying to stop the transparency and the disclosure. The pushback to disclosure, according to the bill itself, is national security. It now includes a list of exemptions for disclosing UAP records if the disclosures, quote, pose a threat to national defense, compromise national intelligence, threaten sources and methods of intel gathering, or compromise any federal agents. So, Elizabeth, people who are pushing for more disclosure are concerned that the list of exemptions in the bill does provide a lot of cover 
for the government and for agencies to deny uh, disclosure now in this version and basically say it could be a national security thing, so we're not going to release the documents that we uh, otherwise would expect. There you go. So I think it's funny. Uh, uh, going into this whole thing is uh, the, the government, obviously, or something in the government. In fact, I think it came down to three. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting political on this. I'm picking sides or anything. But it came down to three Republicans that um, were heavily tied to um, Air Force bases, intelligent community. And by, by tied, I mean they received probably uh, heavy friendship gifts from these people. And uh, that's that's what the theory is anyway, the way they have uh, been tied to these things. And I have the list. I forgot to grab it, though, apparently. So um, I'll say, see if I can find that, the three guys that really have are having trouble with this, that are giving everyone a, such a grief about this. What I don't understand, though, is I thought this had to be passed, and I don't understand politics enough to understand how things are passed. Maybe someone will. If you do, if you understand American politics better than I do, um, comment on this because how, how does this not get passed only by three people? According to the sources, according to the news articles, it was mainly three people that caused this thing not to pass. That said, and um, I know I'm monologuing here. I'm going to let you talk in a second, uh, Matthew. <clears throat> that said, I'm kind of glad this isn't passing right now because uh, I think we have, it gives us a little more time because if all this came out quickly... I really think that we would uh, have less time than we even realized um, to have crazy uh, things hovering above our heads, maybe even talking to to these people. So I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of glad and relieved a little bit. But on the other hand, I am amazed at the the political gears that are being turned and the facets of this. There's so many things going on right, right here that it's hard to keep up with, with everything. You got these guys over here that are trying to prevent it. You got these guys over here that are trying to make it go. You got the Christians that are saying, hey, don't do this. And there's Christians inside the Pentagon that are trying to keep it from uh, moving forward. So I, th I think it's, it's, it's interesting to watch all this from the outside and go, huh, when is this all going to break? And like you said, Matthew, I think it's not. I think it's going to break when it's allowed to break by the NHI, using my finger quotes. What do you think? I would say don't be too relieved because on that last note that you had mentioned, and uh, yeah, that's that's my point of view, is that we will not be seeing any significant legislation coming out of the United States government to give disclosure. So it's not necessarily, you know, you're saying if they had passed something, then you would have thought the time is going to be short. Well, they're not going to pass something. I, I could just, I will... I am like 99.9% .9 certain if it actually happens that the United States government discloses major information on UAP, NHI, anything other than what we're getting right now, maybe a little more, maybe just a little something extra, but nothing full scale, nothing on the level of disclosure that people want in the UFO community. You're just, you're not going to see it. So for the sign of the times. I think it's more important that we're looking outwardly at Bible prophecy and seeing prophecy being fulfilled because, yeah, the United States government just will never be the, the herald <laughs> of, of these beings. And on top of that, the whole idea that this bipartisan effort has uh, has crumbled for a while there it was looking like Republicans and Democrats were reaching across the aisle and were in agreement that yeah, these shady military industrial complex uh, companies, they are hiding stuff from the United States government and the, the people of the America, of course, uh, so, such a high priority. But the idea that they were also taking money and they were uh, using funds and maybe more funds than they should have, all sorts of weird stuff. But that whole idea that it was... Uh, Republicans and Democrats coming together. Maybe we're going to see that kind of fall apart. I noticed that on that stage, I forget who that was. It's a, a Democrat out of Florida who was speaking during that clip. But you saw behind him, there were Republicans sharing the stage with him and, and mm -hmm. Democrats as well. It's There is at its core, I think, a bipartisan type of an effort. Mm -hmm. But maybe there will be, they kind of call them like war hawks, right? And the, 
I don't know, like rhinos. There's a lot of political terminology behind that in American politics. But this idea that certain politicians are there just to serve the interests of the military industrial complex. And that's a very real thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I can see why they would maybe run defense for their I, buddies. I 100% agree. In fact, uh, Adrian Jank uh, in the chat just got me the uh, three people that uh, were the main blockers of it. It's the three Michaels. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Three Michaels, Mike Turner, Mike Rogers, and Mike Johnson. Uh, if you, and I'm going to plug Adrian. Uh, if you don't follow Adrian Jank on Facebook, you should, because I, I get a lot of my information from him. He is just on it, that guy. Man, my goodness, I don't know how he... He sleeps at night because he gets he has a lot of information on this, and I appreciate his his research. So Mike Mike Turner, Mike Rogers, Mike Johnson. How does three people block something? I I, I think that's that's strange, but I guess I don't understand the U.S. politics yet. Anyway, um, on 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 that note, um, there was two things I wanted to talk about, and we talked about yep. Uh, JFK uh, disclosures is that's that's silly and uh, removing portions of the bill. Yep, they removed portions of the bill in order to pass it. Um, let's move on to the podcast. We we uh, talk a little bit about um, um, the uh, astronaut. What's his name? Uh, Charlie Duke. He was on, um, and we had him on. We didn't have him on here, but we we showed a clip of him on the Blaze talking about what he truly thinks about this whole UAP thing. And I kind of want to remind people what we were, what he said, because it was, um, it was, it was pretty uh, outstanding. In historical context, what were described as angels and demons align with aspects of the phenomena. Even today, some high-ranking officials who resist disclosure refer to non-human intelligence as demons. You believe her in UFOs, alien life? Uh, no, I don't believe in alien life. Uh, uh, I believe uh, that the uh, they are that they're demonic, and that they're uh, uh, mm. the demonic beings that make an appearance uh, and appear to be real, and they are real. Uh, I'm angel, uh, Satan Bible says angel uh, Satan can appear as an angel mm -hmm. of light. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they can appear, and so nothing human can make a 90-degree turn at 3,000 miles an hour mm -hmm. and survive. And so they have these, and I think the purpose is to draw you away from the, the, the real uh, God and say, look at us, and this is where you ought to be because mm -hmm. we are superhuman. All right, so um, we've seen that clip before on the channel. If you guys haven't seen that then why aren't you watching more often? But that is actually a, uh, a good clip, talking a little bit more about what's, um, uh, that there's there's actually legitimate people in NASA that believe that this is the demonic thing. It's not just all uh, a bunch of NASites, NASites, is that even a word? That are up there trying to say that um, that this thing is, uh, we don't know what's going on here, but then maybe they're working on it behind the scenes. Um, that's just to say, we got a few other uh uh, characters coming up here that are actually uh, believing that this thing is is not so demonic. Uh, do you have anything to say about that before we get into that, Matt? Just, I remember that clip, and it's so cool to see someone coming out and saying it just like that. Not only saying that they're demonic, but providing biblical explanation. He's standing on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. He's standing for his faith. I think that's awesome. And I think that realistically, People who are going to call them who call themselves Christians, but will go along with this deception because they think, well, maybe the Bible just wasn't clear on this, or you know, maybe the Bible left this information out, or maybe even the Bible's a little wrong, mm -hmm. you know, maybe uh, it was just written by a guy who made a mistake. Those are the kind of people who will end up falling away and will be deceived by Satan and his angels when they show up, mm -hmm. despite having the resources right in front of them. It's, it's a matter of faith as well as knowing that word of God, because I think that we will see, unfortunately, people who are very scholarly and have studied the Bible, but maybe they lack the faith that to back it up. To, they don't have that, uh, that living faith, right? Mm -hmm. 
and they'll fall for a deception. But this guy, he seems to be on it. He's mm-hmm. just calling things out. He's like, yeah, no, this they're gonna they want to be worshipped. Satan comes as an angel of light. He's ticking all the boxes. So yeah. it is. It's refreshing to see someone like that speaking on the main stage because there's really not very many people who do that at all. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and uh, just a preview for next week, we're gonna jump back into Bledsoe because he recently did a uh, Bledsoe Bledsoe, however you say his name. Uh, he's this guy that the government has legitimately been studying for quite a while. Just some guy on a property that that was. Um, that has got a lot of notoriety. His son has a podcast about it, and uh, he has some very strange things that have been happening to him, and the government's out there. It is saying, yeah, we believe Bledsoe's story, and it's the most bizarre story that you've ever heard. And one of the things they say uh, is um, that they have been to his house and they want to study him more because they say, we at NASA, they said NASA, they said, we have seen these things, and we see them all the time. That means these astronauts out in space, they see these things all the time, just like this guy that we just saw. And he said, we see these things, but they won't have anything to do with us, and we want to study them. That's what they said to Bledsoe. We want to study them. Why are they coming to you? That's what they, they said to him. And so I'm going to play that clip, not now. I'll play it next week. But uh, as I, I craft the story and what's actually going on in his uh, more detailed testimony, that we're going to get into next week. Uh, that said, uh, what does John Stratton, this is a, a, another high-ranking um, uh, Pentagon official, he was on another podcast recently, um, what does he think about religious people in the Pentagon that are kind of uh, pushing this thing down? Is there any legitimacy to what Lou Elizondo says about this? This was interesting to me. Watch this. Well, first, let me give you some legitimacy behind, behind uh, who John Stratton is. This is who he is. You know, I started uh, military. I was a full-time reservist uh, with the Air Force, and then I moved up to Maryland to work at Pax River uh, to do weapons integration with the F-18 uh, flight test uh, out of Nav Air. Uh, and from there, I went to the Office of Naval Intelligence, uh, where I was recruited to be an aerospace engineer working with them uh, to look at, you know, really apply the, the blue knowledge, as we call it, uh, and apply it to the red and, and potential adversaries. and write up reports on what I think foreign capabilities can do or not do. Right? In a sense, reverse engineering. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and you take that uh, into to DIA, uh, went over to the Defense Intelligence Agency uh, to work in the Defense Warning Office, uh, where I was applying the same knowledge, but at a higher level uh, and more kind of orchestrating the intel community at that point. There's a term we use, validation. Um, Oh, and I, you know, went to the Pentagon and I worked in N2N6, which is the headquarters level for naval intelligence. The director of naval intelligence uh, is, is dual-hatted, is what we call the N2N6, which is just, you know, the OPNAV office code. Um, at that point, I was still a 15, uh, and then I went off to be uh, the J2, the director of intelligence for the Joint Warfare Analysis Center at Dahlgren. Uh, and then from there, I was promoted uh, initially to what we call Tier 1, uh, Defense Intelligence Senior Level Tier 1. Uh, which is a, as a senior executive position, uh, and then was uh, within eight months or so, I was bumped up to a tier two, which is where the two star comes in. Uh, you know, it's an equivalency uh, throughout my career. It's been, you know, are you really equal, right? We always throw out GS 15s or colonels, or you right. know, there's an equivalency, uh, but you don't go busting around the Pentagon saying, oh, I, I'll rank you, or, you know, yeah. so. I'm an admiral. Right, right, yeah. But, but you do uh, have the, the gravitas, if that's a good word to use, that's not a good word to use, the, the kind of the, the peer level, uh, right? Uh, so, you know, if I'd go into a meeting uh, with a two star or one star, you know, kind of have a peer level. Okay, Matt, uh, I'm going to lean on you for a second because half that stuff I didn't understand what he was saying. It, it sounded legit to me. Uh, is he, is yeah. he part of the military? He's a military contractor. That's what he's describing. That's why he's saying look, there are certain equivalents between, because there, basically there are ranks in the military, as he's describing, and there are tiers to being a military contractor. So he's just saying like, okay, I got to this point in my career, and I was the equivalent of a two star, you know, what have you, on the military side. And that's just what he was saying. He's just mm-hmm. listing off his credentials, but. I mean, yeah, from what he's saying, that's legitimate. Uh, yeah, there are different contractors. 
And like like he's saying, you don't necessarily. I had I've worked alongside military contractors, um, specifically from Lockheed Martin before, and yeah, I'm they were on the same ranking level as like a senior chief, and they would be talking with the senior chief and everything. But there was never a time where uh, I would receive an order from a military contractor. They don't have that authority, and that's what he was kind of getting at. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, okay. I agree with what he says. That is how the system works. So Okay. Okay. All right. So he has some, some background uh, in it. He's not just uh, reciting what he's learned from some other military guy. Um, that's what I wanted to make sure that he really, he really was. This is his background. This is his intro. And he has legitimacy to talk about what he's about to talk about. So um, before we get into what he's going to talk about, he's going to talk about the religious aspects of people seeing these things and uh, these UIPs in the Pentagon, the politics behind it. Uh, but before we do, I want to ask that everyone hit that like button. You got to hit the like button. If you haven't, uh, you should. And so uh, I'm going to look at it real quick. You got 55 likes. Let's at least get to 60, 70. There's 117 uh, concurrent users, uh, li- listeners, users. <laughs> so, uh, and while, while people are hitting that like button, I want to remind everyone that um, right now, Matthew... We are running a promo on uh, Patreon where if you want to get access to the Discord, our private community, you can for 25% off. It's going to be a great opportunity because we only do this once a year. And if you want to this Christmas, join the Patreon. Help us out. Become a member, not just a member to uh, the Patreon, but also to the Discord. And it's not just, hey, I'm not a service. I'm not providing you cable internet. <laughs> this isn't the one hookup to understanding UAP. This is a uh, this is a partnership. We're helping getting out the message. And if you if that's something that you think is necessary, because in the last days they say that there is going to be major, major, major trouble with with um, spiritualism. And no one has ever known what that's all about. What spiritualism is, is going on here? This is it, people. This is it. And nobody else is talking that about about that except us. So if you want to help out us, join the Patreon, uh, and uh, every little bit helps. Or join our Discord. Right, Matthew? <laughs> Talk to people yeah. on here, right? I, yeah, I love I love the Discord. Not, I not you. Not I wasn't single... saying. I wasn't saying you talk oh, to people. I was saying, saying you talk to the people. Tell them. <laughs> tell them that. <laughs> no, no, no. And it's was... a good thing. It is. It, I mean, it is legitimately a good thing. There's, a, yeah, everybody on the Discord is great and civil, and a ton, a ton of information from a ton of different people gets posted. I mean, even for my Thursday shows that I, I like to dig through the Discord and just say, well, what, what are these guys talking about? Because it's most likely if one person's talking about it, you right. got several dozen other people who will find it interesting on the live shows. So mm-hmm. love you guys. Yeah, that's absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I know what I'm, I f- I'll feel bad now. What I meant to say was uh, this is how you talk to people, not talk to people. Matthew, why aren't you talking? No, I know you're not talking because I'm, <laughs> I'm talking right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, back to our reg- regularly scheduled program already in progress. Check this out, dude. This is crazy. Watch this. Was there any involvement? I've heard these stories from people we know uh, about fundamentalist religious people, high ups, who were concerned about its demons or were, were messing with forces of biblical proportions. There's absolutely some concern there. And, and I did see it in writing one time in my career uh, where someone was asking me to, to push back because their religious concerns uh, and, and you should wave off of this topic is literally what they were telling me. Um, you know, you, should, you shouldn't be involved in this. Um, I know it exists, I think what my professional opinion is after again years now of of being involved is that seems to have died off i think one now you know i'm elevated into that senior level and a lot of my colleagues that were all at the same you know level that had grown up with me throughout the process we don't really think that way right so i think kind of the old guard was moving out the new guard was moving in and it never once after that early DIA stuff, you know, did it ever, ever stop uh, or get in the way. It was just early on when, when kind of that old guard's there and, and protecting their own, you know, what they believe. Interesting. So interesting that he thinks <clears throat> that this whole thing, although it has had uh, a lot of people in the past uh, in leadership saying that this is absolutely a, a, a deception, we shouldn't touch it, 
that's disappearing. That's yeah. disappearing. Wow. Yeah. What do you think? Well, he said, didn't he say the old guard? Didn't yeah. he use that phrase? Yeah, that, that whole idea is the changing of the guard. It's that the in all these organizations, and we should know this too, like people talk about Disney. Oh, Disney's been around for 100 years now. And it's like, nope. No, this version of Disney has not been around for 100 years. The guys who were working on it 100 years ago are dead <laughs> or, or very, very old. And they're not they don't have any active role in it. And it's the same thing for the military there. I'm sure at one point in time, because the the common religious ideas, people were Christian in America, even if they didn't have their heart and soul in it. It's like, this is my cultural upbringing. This is my cultural understanding is through a Christian lens. So yeah, we're not going to mess around with obviously interdimensional beings who are trying to communicate with us and are messing with our technology and doing all this stuff. <laughs> it's clearly demonic. Don't do it. It's, it's just that simple. But now I would say it, it makes sense to me. Those guys are getting phased out. The people who are younger, uh, they don't have those strong convictions and they're hungry too. People are really, really hungry for something spiritual. You know, oftentimes I hear it referred to as the God sized hole that people have in their hearts yeah. and nothing's going to fill that God sized hole other than God. Well, when you have a bunch of people in this military establishment with God sized holes and suddenly they're brushing up against something that's genuinely supernatural, mm -hmm. they're going to dive head first into it because this could give them meaning mm -hmm. and it's it's a sad situation but i can i can see what what he's talking about playing absolutely. out absolutely absolutely it's fascinating and the uh the um we have actually tried the speaking of how it's so obvious that um this is a demonic deception we've actually tried to get some uh popular uh news anchors on here i won't name them Heck, i'm not i'm not here to dox them but uh well-known people that are in the ufo world and outspoken about this uh recently and it appears as if now i'm still hoping that door is still open but it appears right now that they are not um willing to do that because they don't want to be associated with any specific religious ideas christian ideas behind this so that that tells me one of three things Number one, they know that it's obvious that this thing, and it's easily proven. I'm not. I'm not here to, you know. If I were to actually get an interview with them, I wouldn't be like, oh, let me tell you how it is. I mean, I'm. I'm curious, very curious, just about their what their worldview is and why they think uh, this is a, a good idea. I have an idea of how that would go, but um, want to hear from their lips. Uh, and number two, I. I think that I wonder if they are so on the inside that they don't want to make it look like they are siding with, uh, with the other side here. So I, I don't know. I don't know yet. But I, I, I solicit your prayers because getting some of these uh, more uh, prominent people on the show would really uh, make it take off a little bit and help out the algorithm, I guess you could say. So, and, and that's a, also a, a solicit to anybody that, is, is, that knows people in the community that's interested in hearing their religious ideas. We want to have them on the show. That's all I'll say. Um, this next clip is from, uh, we've done stuff from, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Weaponized Podcast. But this time, the Weaponized guy, I forget his name, Jeremy Cor Corbell, he's on another podcast yeah. talking about the exact same thing. The religious uh, ideas inside uh, with the devil inside the government. Listen to what he has to say about this, and, and it comes, sort of comes as no surprise. Is it, you know, are beings coming from oh, other planets? I see what you mean. Or is it interdimensional? Or is it something even stranger? And that's what's interesting. That's the big question. One other thing that was reported that not really touched upon, there was resistance to even doing this study and that was because of religious belief and that was deep within the intelligence communities you know there was a, a religious belief we, this is dealing with the devil do not study this hmm. so that is a fact wait 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 within yes. the government that is studying this those folks that happen to believe whatever they believe were saying don't study this because it's dancing with the devil a small i feel uh, like when you take that job you don't really have the right to you that got anymore. It right a small minority, a contingency of people uh -huh. within our intelligence and defense community, and this is something I'm not saying for the first time, it's out there if you look for it, 
that Harry Reid talked about it, that they believed it to be you know, satanic or something against their religion and tried to squash the project. Hmm. This is the most important stuff we can be studying because it's technologies that could revolutionize our world and it would become uh, more inclusive maybe if we understood who is operating and from where mm -hmm. and what is the intention of those operating these vehicles. And they are vehicles. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let me, let me rephrase what he just said. Uh, he says we have to know what these things are doing and why they are in our atmosphere. How do you do that without communicating with them? I'm going to say number one, and that's the one thing I, I am terrified yep. about. And number two, um, he's saying that, you know, uh, it kind of, Pushing down the idea that oh come on they they think they're they're Satan this is the most the most thing that we could do is find out more about these this technology this hidden science this fascinating stuff this this technology that has been given to us remember that remember that key key, key phrase what what do you think Matthew there's a there's a distinction between researching and contacting and the way he talks about it where he's saying there are Christian people who are discouraging research. We are doing research right here on this channel. I, I don't necessarily think that researching and having a, an idea of what's going on is a bad thing. I have a feeling that the type of research they were doing was, well, let's get in touch with them. Let's see what they have to say. Let's, uh, he's talking about the technology that's on offer. Let's stick out our hands for some of this free candy that they're giving out. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a bad thing to not want to have contact with them, but it seems that the people who are involved with those military agencies, they had done enough research, as we have, to know, whoa, this is not something that we want to be messing around with. Mm -hmm. they, these are demonic powers. We kn those are people who knew they're real, and th they can't, like, okay. So they say, too, another popular saying is the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that it doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. There's that whole idea. And that's essentially what Satan has managed to do with his angels. They've taken away the spiritual aspect of the world. They've almost, they've switched genres. You know, it, it, it seems we used to live in a fantasy world. Now we live in a science fiction world. Mm -hmm. And they just, all they did is they're changing costumes and they're putting on, <laughs> you know, instead of being fairies that come and visit you in mm -hmm. the night, suddenly it's little green men who are stepping out of spaceships that see you. Yeah, instead of traveling through interdimensional portals to other realms, it's we have physical vehicles that you can fly and you can fly them to our planet if you'd like. It's the same spiel, just a different coat of paint. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. And what I think is fascinating is what he said in, in the very end there is that, um, let me, I'm actually, you know what, maybe I'll just play that part again about technology. I think it's about right here. All right, listen to this. Object. This is the most important stuff we can be studying because it's technologies that could revolutionize our world and... So, technologies that could revolutionize our world. That was fascinating to me. Uh, and why was that so fascinating? Well, because there is this idea and it's, uh, it's, it's in the lore. It's been, in, long before ufology was a thing, there was uh, the idea of, oh, let's see, is it the Greek, the Greek... Um, mythology are you talking about prometheus yes prometheus is greek yes greek mythology and so what is fascinating to me about that is that um do you know do you know about what, what this uh greek mythology is about actually we don't have to right if, if you if you don't that's fine because I, I have a whole a video with a segment from um uh one of the podcasters here interviewing that um that that's talking about that um yeah. Why, don't, why don't we air that first, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. All right, here, we, here we go. Um, that said, there's also the myth of Prometheus. So Prometheus is a Greek god titan, actually. Okay? He's, so he's like a, a proto-god who, in various iterations of the myth, he either gives us technology in the form of fire and helps us learn how to utilize, you know, fire and thus, you know, create civilizations that we know of today. Um, or he also creates humans, he creates us, okay? And then also kinds of trains us into how to use this kind of thing. So, you know, so these ideas that we have were created by these hum these uh, non-human intelligences, um, yeah, this is something that's, that's 
I would call it a like a standard motif in in the not just the UFO belief systems, but in belief systems around the world. Uh, certain tribes here in North America, indigenous tribes, uh, believe they're from star people, star nations. Star people and star nations. So I thought we'd dig into that a little bit because that sure sounds like what I think it sounds like. That sounds like, um, while we've been researching this, I've discovered that one of the things, and this, this was a shocker to me when I discovered it, Matthew. One of the things that they say is, uh, they were trying to answer the question, well, why is it that these things, if they're so advanced, why do they crash all the time? And I think it was Ross Colhart in, in an obscure interview. I'm trying to find it still because I'm sure I talked about it on this channel where he said, actually, we've discovered that they haven't crashed very much. They've, most of the ones that, and you have to uh, take uh, his word for this, take David Grutch's word for this, because I have no, we have no proof as of yet, but the, the craft that they have, the physical deceptions that are in the government's possession, I'm going to say, just, just take their word for it for a second, have been given as gifts. That's what he, the word he used, gifts, where they have been intact on the ground, just sitting there and no idea uh, why or where they came from or anything like that. Now, there have been uh, a few Hollywood and, and, UF, uh, and uh, YouTube productions that seem to surmise that this thing was a, a um, and this is getting, and this is getting into the, the lore already, this, the idea that it's, it was a agreement where the NHI, I'm going to use those words, were talking to the government saying, we'll give you this if you do this. This is Prometheus. This is the Prometheus thinking here. And so what I think is going on, if this is true, if this someday comes out sometime, is they're playing Prometheus right now. And Prometheus, essentially, and I'm going to talk to a, a, a good researcher friend of mine, but we're going to do a whole show on Prometheus and showing that it is Satan himself. Well, Every yes. I was going to I was going to say if you don't see there's a very clear connection between Prometheus and Satan and that is Satan is referred to as Lucifer. Lucifer it means light bearer and Prometheus bore the light, the fire from Mount Olympus mm -hmm. and brought it down to mankind. The same way that Satan would love to claim I bore the the knowledge from that tree and I brought it down <laughs> to mankind and, and gave that to you. And you're so much better off because you're not living in ignorance. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny and ironic considering the whole idea of Lucifer being a light bearer. It yeah. wasn't his light that he was able to bear. He was bearing God's light. At one point in time, he was a highly esteemed angel and he fell so far and so hard because yeah. he, he used to be, I mean, the Bible does describe Satan as being uh, beautiful and having all these precious stones are, uh, are a part of him, and he is dazzling to look upon. And, yeah, yeah it's just he, he looked at himself and ended up thinking, yeah, I think I can, I can be better than the one who created me. That's what he said, yeah. So, yeah, just madness. Yeah, absolute madness. And so um, we're going to jump straight into ancient aliens right now. Now, I don't... I, and this show drives me nuts. And I'm going to show you why it drives me nuts, because we're going to go over uh, the first intro scene right now. And it's not going to be, it's not going to talk about Prometheus yet. But um, uh, I might have to pause this several times, because it just drives me absolutely nuts, uh, what they say so matter-of-fact about the Bible. This whole episode is talking about Prometheus and the Bible. Watch this. And why is he determined to corrupt all of humanity? Perhaps the answers can be found in the myths and legends that describe Satan's ancient origins. In the beginning, Satan was one of the angels that was created by God before the physical universe was created. And there was basically a sphere of angels around God, worshiping God. And Satan at that time was Lucifer, or the day star. He was the brightest of the angels. Satan is actually one of the archangels. He all right, all right, all right, all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, yeah, that guy's title was religious demonologist. <laughs> Does that mean <laughs> he's religiously for the demons, or he just studies the religions and demons and religions? 
don't know. I thought that was a funny title. I wasn't very clear. <laughs> did did anybody? I'm t- I'm talking in the chat or even Matthew uh, right now. Anybody catch those red flags? Oh, thank you, Aaliyah. She's already putting red flags up here. Uh, this this mm-hmm. is interesting because I, I heard two things. I and I um. I have to look back in in my research, but I don't believe uh, Satan was given the name Satan or uh, Lucifer until the fall. Um, no, it was Lucifer. It was Lucifer. Well, he would be fall. Lucifer prior to the yeah, fall, then Satan, and then he becomes Satan because Satan means mm-hmm. the adversary and the yeah, Lucifer is light bearer. Yeah, but yeah. they also said he's the archangel. He's one of the archangels, and the Bible doesn't say that. He says he's is uh, there's cherubim and seraphim. Yeah. And uh, he was one of the covering cherubs. And so uh, she says that so matter-of-factly as if she knows exactly what the Bible says about this, and it, it reveals that she does not. So let's... Yeah. Another weird thing, too, I don't know if you caught this, but talks about he was one of the angels that was created before, uh, like, the Earth was created, or the universe was created. In my understanding, from the Genesis account, no angels were created post uh i guess creation is what you could refer to the earth or the realm the what i I don't know i don't want to say realm even necessarily but the where we inhabit is clearly laid out in the first chapter of genesis and in there you don't see any angels being brought about in, in that particular creation story so all angels had to originate before this reality that we're mm-hmm. that we're in mm-hmm. which i just thought it was a weird thing to say oh he was one of the angels that was made before <laughs> it's like well all of them were so it's not <laughs> I don't know. yeah okay let's see what other there's at least two or other things in here that i'm just like my brow is not not convinced that he is one of the high angels one of the highest ranking one of the most beautiful the most beloved he is beloved of god he is a bringer of light when god created man in his image. He ordered all the angels to uh, worship his image in this man. What? 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 Where, do, where is that in the Bible? He, he ordered all the angels to worship man? It said the Bible never. I mean, I mean... I, I, that's, a, that's a weird take. <laughs> where does that even Considering come from? Considering he's the one who wants... He wants to worship of man and the adoration of his fellow angels. <laughs> I don't, there is that, no man worship. Satan hates mankind. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, he okay. wants us dead. It doesn't, doesn't revere us at all. That's, that's almost like a, a reverse of what, uh, a Gnostic idea, because isn't it that, uh, like you said, Satan Satan doesn't like the human race. I mean, primarily, I think, because, I mean, I have nothing to back this up yet, but it's we were made in the image of God, and he hates God. And so I think it's interesting that, um, that he says that God made the angels worship man. No, that's all reversed. That's all reversed. Anyway, um, yeah, let's, let's continue. This clip is uh, only a two-thirds over. And Satan refused. He says, look, they're mud people. We're made out of fire. I'm not going to do it. And so he gets kicked out. He grew (laughs) arrogant. He began to challenge God. And for this arrogance, he lost his heavenly position. He was thrown out of the heavens and fell. When Lucifer was cast down, it was instant and abrupt and total. And he was cast down to earth to roam here until the end of time. Okay, so they've already confused a lot of things, but... Um... I'm confused, because it's <laughs> now... Okay, hold on. So, mankind was... Yeah, okay. Man was made from the the earth, the dust of the earth. And then he's saying, but we are beings of fire, um, and not... that. That's a weird thing. It, that's I feel like that's extra biblical. I feel like, is that the Quran says something about? I I, the, said, I, said, I was thinking it's, it's Quran or it's Mormon yeah, or it's something that they're yeah. like uh, beings of fire. It's, there's like kind of an elemental prospect to it. I think we actually had didn't we have that guy? Uh, there's some former Muslims actually in the chat tonight. So yeah. it'd be great if, if you're out there if you're still watching. 
clear that up for me. But so wait, God. So God told the angels to worship mankind, and Satan refused to worship mankind. Is that the story? Because I'm I was a little bit confused. Yeah, that's the story. That's this, what it is? They're surmising that uh, that God uh, forced <sighs> the angels to to worship man, and they they're no, mud people and were that? fire people. When does that ever happen? When <laughs> what? That's not true. <laughs> Angels are never called to. Is again? Is that the Quran? I feel like that might be. A, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm confusing. Something, maybe. Seriously though, because that's not the way it plays out in the Bible at all. No mm -hmm. angel is ever directed to worship mankind. No mankind is ever directed to worship an angel. There is one worthy of worship. That is God Almighty. Like period. End of story. It's not yeah. even a debate. I don't know. This, these guys are cracked. <laughs> <laughs> they need to they need to fact check uh, right. themselves before they just go on. Like you said, so matter of factly too. Like if someone was not familiar with Christianity, the Bible, they would watch the show and be like, "Oh, oh yeah, okay. oh, yeah, that's what yeah. happened." I didn't know that. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't read the Bible, but once. I, yeah. I, I think what's what's interesting though is that the the like you said, matter of fact, and and they uh, seem to oh they've done their research. They're on cable TV. Um, uh, my next note says uh, they did a good job with the story of Adam and Eve. Okay, so I skipped the story of Adam and Eve because I have to skip the stuff I agree with. I have to talk about stuff I don't agree with on here. Otherwise, they they catch me for um, uh, just showing their program and not saying anything about it. We can't just do a watch along. Yeah, we can't yeah, do a watch along. Have to, you have to pick out the, the key points and say, okay, this is where we're taking issue with it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, he's right. He'll just get a slap on the wrist. Yeah. A big so, old slap slap. <laughs> so <don't> want that. <laughs> after they talk about Adam and Eve, then they go into the, the Gnostic story and how the Adam and Eve story might not be 100% true. It might be Gnostic. This is what they say about it. Listen. But is this story of Adam and Eve really a fanciful account of how evil entered the world? Or might there be another, even more profound explanation? Oh, oh boy. Love those words. You can make a right? case that Eve actually wants to mature. She wants to grow up. God wants to keep us Never. in a state of perpetual innocence. Infantility, perhaps. Eve decides that knowing everything she can know about this world into which she has been placed is more important even than obeying a particular command of God. The serpent enables her. Satan's wanting to give humanity all this incredible wisdom that maybe can even elevate humankind to the level of God's. But the Old Testament God Yahweh is saying, not so fast. Humankind aren't, aren't perhaps worthy of this knowledge, and this becomes then the battle between God and Satan. Was the serpent's temptation of Adam and Eve really a case of sabotage? Was it a deliberate effort to seduce mankind into sinning against its creator? Or might Satan's real purpose have been to encourage mankind to share the fruits of God's wisdom? <laughs> wow. This is just blatant. Uh, this is a uh, full endorsement for Satan. Yeah, first of all, well, just going back to Eve, oh, she wanted to mature, and God wanted to keep her and Adam infantile. God didn't want them to die through disobedience, through through sin entering in. That, that's, uh, And I also, I, I don't really understand this. This kind of happens a lot where they'll talk about, yeah, God never wanted you to have any knowledge. He was just going to give everything from you. I believe that God... He's, I mean, obviously, if you read the Bible, we have an expectation that he's going to reveal things to us and we're going to have an idea. What was happening with Adam and Eve, it seems, was it's a situation where God is going to set a parameter and Satan is going to try to get them to break that parameter and to show that they don't have trust in him and that they can put their trust in another authority and go against <laughs> God's power. Uh yeah, the whole the whole thing was just ridiculous. Also, yeah. did you notice how that when they were talking about like how it was Satan and stuff before they did that, there was the Rio de Janeiro statue with Jesus oh, yeah. like outstretched on the hill, and then they just like they they're showing that imagery, and then they switch over to talking about Satan and Satan giving mankind, and it's clearly like a depiction of uh, like the Father in medieval art, like and the dove coming down. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. like that that has nothing to do with Satan. 
but they're mm -hmm. just casually talking about Satan over images of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Right. So, 100%. Yeah, this is this is full endorsement. Uh, I will, I, it'd be honestly, whoever is producing these episodes, it might be worth taking a dive and just seeing who are you? Like, what do you, <laughs> who do you roll with? What kind of uh, symbols do you like to wear on your shirts? And what do you outwardly <laughs> say is your religion? Because that was just as blatant as it gets. Yeah. That's totally anti-God and pro-Satan. We're on clip eight right now. I'm going to, I'm going to just going off the, what, what you said, I'm going to do a quick reveal because I don't think it's going to reveal much, but this was fascinating to me that at the, the producer of this, of this, uh, you ready for this? The, pr the producing company's name of this thing is, you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Of a grand plan, a series of moral challenges intended right to for prepare it. us for our next and perhaps final close encounter. Prometheus. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Prometheus Entertainment. So, okay. they're, yeah, they're... Um, they're fully bought and sold into this idea. Yeah. So Great. this. Great. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Just letting you know. Seriously. Yeah. I, I mean, they might not ever come out so blatantly. Few do, but enough of they have to show signs, symbols. They compulsively reveal their allegiances. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're on the lookout, it's not something that I don't want. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling our audience <laughs> hey become paranoid and like go nuts looking at everything but when it's this blatant it's right. in your face like, yeah. what, are you, what are you gonna do with that it's yeah. just it's right there that happens to me so often um just ridiculous i've mentioned before like the number 33 comes up a lot and it'll be ridiculous because you're sitting there <laughs> i remember one time it was ironic because i was telling um a family member of mine about it and like yeah yeah 33 ever since i started realizing it was when i first had seen it and understood i was like they're satanists and they just love the number 33 i don't know <laughs> they spam it everywhere they can and he's like oh that's weird uh whatever and then it puts on a tv show and it's like the character's birthday and they go surprise and they have a big balloon it's his 33rd birthday <laughs> <laughs> two three balloons and it's just like 33 and i'm like see there it is why <laughs> so get away from it so just it a, a little preview of next week as i'm listening to this podcast um the the uh bledsoe says that the angel i mean literally he said that uh, and you'll, you'll get this next week the this this woman uh came to him the woman you know hmm, huh, the woman i know the, the lady okay, okay. the, the woman, lady the yeah the one but this time she was completely in a white garb he says all the way down to her her uh, wrists and all the way down to her ankles in a white flowing garb and now this is something and that that's in the you know you expect to see that as an angel in the bible because that's how they describe but what was different about it is Number one, they were called a woman. There's no woman right. angels in the Bible. And number two, I mean, what she, he said, this woman that looked like an angel had a triangle on her chest. Why? And so what was fascinating about that was that he said that uh, when all these government officials came to him, they were the most interested when he said that this, this lady that appeared to him had a triangle on her chest. And he didn't go into much inter uh, beyond that, but I thought that was fascinating. Why would they care about that unless they've actually already talked to something, some lady with a triangle of some kind? How weird is this? The triangle thing just irks me. But, um, I mean, not because it's a triangle and it's a, it's a well-known occultic symbol, because it's just a shape. I mean, we play with triangles as mm -hmm. children, but it's, it's interesting. That's all I'll say. Um, yeah. Well, anyway. it's the triangle. It's the, pyra it's the pyramidal shape, too, that you see. All over the world, pyramids have been erected, and Satan loves his loves pyramids. And there's, I mean, I think probably one of the best kind of ideas behind that that I've seen is the, the way that the New Jerusalem is described. And yes, it could be a cube. It could be, uh, people have, obviously, people have their own opinions on what the shape may be. But I thought it was pretty, pretty mind-bending to think maybe it's pyramidal because that would actually fit the descriptions of its base being, uh, you know, like it could be a square bottomed pyramid mm -hmm. going up and it would be as high as it is long and wide and all of that. And then that, that to me makes sense as to why Satan would be appropriating this particular symbol because he's like, it's a symbol of his new world order. And he knows that God eventually intends to put the new Jerusalem here on earth. And it's almost his way of saying, well, no, I'm going to have my 
city. I'm going to have my mm. power here manifested on Earth, not you. I, I just thought that was interesting. I wonder if the Tower of Babel was a little bit of, of pyramid ish too anyway not, not speculation it's but, very it's very structurally sound i'm it's... obviously they're still standing in uh egypt and all over the world so that right makes sense right to me. if if audience if you're interested in hearing more about uh what happened next week blood so you better be subscribed and hit that bell icon on the channel uh hit the like button we're at 80 right now come on let's make it to 100 before we're done with the show um oh we will we'll hit 100 no problem <laughs> Okay, so next clip, we're going to dig into what they think about Job for a moment here. Um, uh, did Satan work with Job? Did he work with, uh, did, did, excuse me, did Satan work with God in Job? Did Satan convince God to do something with Job? Is, the, is this divine bureaucracy? Bureaucracy. I can't speak tonight. Watch this. According to the Hebrew Bible, Job was among the wealthiest men in the kingdom and owned enormous herds of cattle, sheep, and camels. He was also among the most righteous, making sacrifices to the Almighty God to atone for his transgressions and the sins of his family. In the story of Job, Satan is part of the heavenly council of angels, and the council meets, and God is at the council meeting, and basically he and Satan have a discussion. And God says, you know, look at Job. He's, he's very faithful. And Satan, in charge of quality control, and says, well, of course, you know. Wait, wait what? Satan's in charge of quality control? <laughs> what? Yeah, what did that? Satan's in charge of quality control, says <laughs> Father William Fulco, professor of classics and archaeology at Loyola. Marymount oh. University. Yeah, let's all back up. There's a Jesuit. I'm sure he's got a good idea of what's going on. Let's learn from him. All right, here we go. Let's repeat that. He's, he's very faithful, and Satan in charge of quality control and says, well, of course, you know, you give him everything. What do you expect? And Satan actually challenges God and says, if Job were tempted, if he no longer had all of these wonderful things that God had given to him, what happens to him then? Satan convinces God that Job should be tested to see if he is really all that good. And this is where Satan becomes the first adversary, the first tester of humans. So it's Not interesting. True, because we have the garden. Right. And we have we the also... Garden of Eden, and there are pl there's plenty more. You, I like these people really. <laughs> I'm, what am I gonna do? Right? <laughs> I can't just flip my desk here. But at a certain point, it's just like you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. No, that is not the first time that he ever uh, came against humanity. I mean, you have Cain and Abel, right? Yeah, that's that what I was gonna say. Next. I know that Satan isn't Satan isn't explicitly a a player that's mentioned, but he's obviously there sitting on Cain's shoulder when God warns him that sin is at the door. Mm -hmm. Who Who's the bearer of this, <laughs> this sin? Right. Who's bearing this false light? You know, that's Satan. He's obviously creeping into his heart to murder <laughs> his brother. It's ridiculous. In this story, Satan is actually working with God as a kind of member of his staff. Or oh, he, Satan's working with God now as a member of his staff. That's, well, that's... where is this guy from? Uh, I want to see his name tag let's now. See, is that the same guy? Leo? Le Le no, let's see. Back up. A no, little. no, no, no. no. I, you don't guy. have to. I'm saying he's a new guy. He's a new face. So right, where probably, is he? Maybe he probably not. said it know. later. Yeah, they probably said it earlier, and I just couldn't catch it. Oh well, it's just a Jesuit or a Jesuit's <laughs> associate. <laughs> All right, here we point. go. He's <laughs> actually <laughs> working with God as a kind of member of his staff or his heavenly council. The divine council of God is very interesting because we learned that it is composed of various angelic beings, including Satan. And the idea is that these are advanced beings who carry out God's orders and God's wishes from the commands of this council. It really seems like we're seeing some kind of divine bureaucracy, something like you would see in a corporate or a governmental bureaucracy. Okay, I'll give them that there is some kind of uh, uh, court scene. There is some kind of, uh, I guess, uh, bureaucracy in the, in the sense there isn't a, uh, a controversy going on. A government is really yeah. what you're looking for. Yeah, a government. But God has a government because he, is, he governs all of creation. So. Yeah, 
But there is an adversary. The Bible calls it an adversary. Yeah. It doesn't say he's, oh, Satan was just, you know, one of the, the helpers that was uh, teaching God something. God knows everything. You, you don't work with God and convince him of anything. It's God says, yeah. okay, I will show you the, the, the right path here because I already know. But for the rest of the universe that doesn't know everything, I will show you exactly what's going on and prove you wrong, Mr. Adversary, Satan. And uh, so they're teaching a Gnostic gospel. And, and what I found as I was watching this, Matthew, it, it was yeah. fascinating. I'm going to break in just for a second here, uh, was that they, they show something. And then they, they, they ask questions at the end of it. They say, well, look at this, and look at this. They provide evidence to what they believe, and it's completely Gnostic. And then they ask you questions. Ancient astronauts believe that this could be, and it could be, that Satan was working with God. And, they, and then you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's, it's completely Gnostic. It's completely dangerous, really, because if you don't know your Bible— you might get confused. Well, well, keep in mind, they're talking about this as if Satan is, yeah, like a functioning member. Uh, he's just like punching the clock for God here <laughs> when he's he's in rebellion to God and he wants to overthrow God's authority. He's not like some guy who's just, his job is quality control and he's like, yeah, yeah, like I'll take the flack, but, uh, you know, it's got to be done. Someone's got to get in there and rough up humanity. God, I got gotcha, you. No problem. <laughs> That's not how it works at all. Mm. It's just a to- it paints a totally different picture from what the reality actually is. But I, you know, Satan likes it that way. He he likes to distort the truth because if the truth is so plain that he is this terrible evil being and is the father of all lies and just has caused uh, just massive amounts of suffering and pain, then he's not going to be able to rally anyone to his cause. But right. if he repaints the story and it looks something like this, then it's like, oh, yeah, I don't really like that God guy either. Yeah. You know? That's how for, it goes. For, and, and for the person that's, that's um, probably not understanding this whole biblical concept completely, yes, God created Satan, but Satan corrupted his own mind through his pride. That's what the Bible says. And it wanted uh, to have the observance and worship for himself, and it corrupted him. It made him uh, think that he was very prideful and that he should have a part of this uh, godship just like everyone else, and he had to be thrown out because of that. And he was cast out of the perfect world that was heaven. There was sin in heaven, terrible things going on in heaven at the very beginning, and they were cast out, and they made their... um, a lot of people say, well, isn't this, isn't, isn't Satan an extraterrestrial technically? Well, he is, but he's made his place mm-hmm. here on Earth a um, kind of base for continuing his rebellion because he has convinced yeah. the, the Earth. Well, not by choice continue. either. I, yeah, he is, he is down here amongst us, and it, it is like a banishment, an exile type of a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Satan... Yes, he is here. He has influence on this world, a pretty pretty great influence on this world, mm-hmm. by all means. But God is ultimately in control beyond that, and yeah, he's he's just gonna the same way that sin was purged in heaven, it's gonna be purged here on earth. So we mm-hmm. all have that to look forward to, because the Bible does talk about the new earth, where mm-hmm. all of Satan's terrible plots and the the consequences of those plots, they're not there anymore. We actually just get to enjoy life. It's, it's worth hoping for. Right, right, hundred percent. So I think um, uh, says my notes here say Anunnaki. We're going to talk about the Anunnaki now. Inside this, uh, they are. They said they brought new technology. They're part of Prometheus, and there has been many, many, many different uh, uh, religions and, and faiths and traditions that have had this lore talked about them. This this uh, idea that there has been a being from long, long, far away that has brought into this thing technology, fire, things to help us, swords. Interesting. It's an interesting concept. Let's see what they say real quick. Was Satan really a civilizing force for early humans, as some ancient astronaut theorists believe? And if so, might further evidence be found by examining other ancient myths and legends? In ancient Samaria, you have these very curious stories of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki 
were half God, half man, who came down from the stars. They were instructing the Sumerians in various arts of civilization. They were very strange looking. They had elongated heads. They looked almost like insect type people or what they call reptilian features in mm. a sense or a viper visage as the watchers were called in the Bible. In global cultures, we find constant references to these giant celestial... Yeah, I know. I was thinking that too for a second there. I was like, wait a second. Watchers? Where are the watchers described as snake-like beings or I, insect-like beings? I don't remember that Does at anybody all. anybody know that? Mm -mm. Huh? Anybody <laughs> in the chat? <laughs> uh, watchers. Hold on. So watchers, I think they're mentioned in Daniel. What other book do we see watchers in? Anywhere else? I'm, uh, I'm curious. Let me, let me open the I know Bible that... Uh, I'm going to look for watchers. Yeah. Jeremiah and Daniel. So, yeah, Jeremiah 4, 16. Make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come off country and give other voices against the cities of Judah. Which, But then Daniel is di directly, this matter is by decree of the watchers and demand by the word of the holy ones. So, yeah, I don't see a snake-like... Yeah, was it in Enoch? Because I know I know that the Book of Enoch does mm. talk about watchers and stuff. It, so that's possibly Maybe. where they're getting it from. He's probably confused, thinking that Enoch Maybe. is part of the Bible. So uh, let's let's continue running with this and see what they say in this next half. We might get cut off again, but we'll see what happens. In global cultures, we find constant references to these giant celestial beings coming to Earth and initiating or instructing humankind. Satan himself is considered to be a seraphim, which means winged serpents or fiery serpents. But yet the word seraphim contains the word ser, meaning serpent, and rephim, meaning giant. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I, I'm gonna have to uh, look that up. Was the character we know as Satan really an extraterrestrial being? one who broke with his own species in order to live among our distant ancestors. Broke with God on his own Did species. he, along with other so-called fallen angels, actually break with God, not out of spite or arrogance, but instead to help mankind? Wow. Wow. So completely Gnostic. He's like, we're, we're, we're trying to help mankind. And, uh, and instead of, uh, and he's breaking with God to, to be our, our savior, our, our helper. Is that, is that what they're saying? Yeah. That was just such a noble sacrifice on his part to want to be God and want to overthrow God and reign as God and be worshiped as God. Wow. Such a, so, so tough. <laughs> it's, it's not correct. And so, uh, yeah. that's not what the Bible teaches at all. And so uh, it is a Gnostic doctrine. Yeah, I see in the chat. Vance says Gnostic doctrine. It is. This is, a, and they've been kind of, it, it's almost um, just kind of lowering you into it. But now it is going to go in full blown Gnosticism. That's, you know. Right. So Prometheus, this is where it really gets interesting. This is uh, what the title was all talking about. All right. So check this out. This is the, this is the crux of the whole matter. Watch this. According to the legends of ancient Greece, the Titan, known as Prometheus, sinned against the gods by stealing the secret of fire and giving it to man. He's a god that becomes associated with humans because he, he's a champion for humans. Right? And the mythological stories talk about how Prometheus is basically like their uh, representative. Another such deity was the god Viracocha. Worshipped by the ancient Inca in the Andes of South America, Viracocha was a powerful creator god who came to Earth to pass on celestial knowledge. Like Prometheus, this Incan god was described as a bringer of light and is depicted in ancient Incan sculpture as holding two lightning bolts and wearing the sun as a crown. The tradition of civilizing deities who go around civilizing, educating us, is something which we find in all traditions, whether they are the great cultures of Egypt, Inca, 
or the Mayan empires or smaller cultures elsewhere in the universe. And so what we're finding is that the story of Satan as a civilizing deity is definitely not unique, but sits within a clear framework across the entire world. And it shows you that the importance of Satan is not just something limited to the Bible, but really tells us an awful lot about civilization as a whole. All right, so... Just, just marry him, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the importance of Satan. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why all of these cultures have this uh, idea and have these types of tradition. And really most people just don't want to admit it because it's it's the unsettling truth that there are demonic spirits there are fallen angels that are have been going around to all civilizations across the planet and have let them know hey here's here's the truth here it is and there is there's a different kind of variety based on the location because they're tailoring it to that specific group of people but that's why there are so many shared myths i don't think it's necessarily uh, yeah, what, because the myths are a true thing. I think it's because they've been fed it, and uh, yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. All and the different I, entities. I, this Prometheus thing is, um, I mean, they, they, like you said, there has been. It appears that there has been. A, what are they calling the Sumerians? And in the lore, where these things have come around, they've given them technology. They said they were from beings from distant, far distant galaxies. And they have come to help them. Isn't that interesting? That that's what's happening today. Is that why our technology has grown so fast in this last hundred years? I don't know. I don't know. Has Nikola Tesla worked a lot with uh, spiritualism to make so many adventures? I believe that's true too. Um, I'd like to do a, a short about that. Uh, someday I will. But there is interesting uh, uh, facts out there saying that perhaps. Perhaps what we are seeing right now are the actual um, advancement through this technology. This is the Prometheus uh, agenda type thing, and it's all demonic. Now, does that does that mean that just because um, perhaps, and this is again surmising, that a lot of this technology has been given to us as a gift from smarter beings, angelic beings that are demonic, that we can't use it? No, because Satan works in, in, in truths and falses. <laughs> Just because something is, is, is from something demonic doesn't mean it can't be used for good, too. And so I, I'm gonna, I, I jump right into my spiel and cancel culture, if I, if I could. I know a lot of Christians, and this might be you, and I'm not stepping your toes because this is a delicate topic. Uh, not you, Matthew, but just people in general that, um, that say, well, you know what? XYZ store is is uh, doing terrible things, so I'm going to cancel it. And I well, I feel that's a noble cause. Um, there is, I believe, um, a much more noble one, and that is to look at the character, see what what's going on here, and what you can be used to help the cause of God more than uh, you know just leaving everything. Because I believe someday people, good Christians, are going to be uh, canceled by people that believe they are good Christians. And uh, that's what I don't want to be into. I want, I want to be a part of that group that says, I'm just going to cancel anything that I think is bad. Because it's going to get really confusing someday. And I, I, I realize that's, that's, a, that's a heavy thing to say, because there's, there's a lot of debate about that. But uh, I don't cancel everything. Well, yeah, about, I mean, canceling and censorship in general. Uh, I like to just hear all opinions, even dissenting opinions, people who I, I don't agree with. I've said before, if you can respectfully present your opinion, uh, and then I'll listen to it. I don't have a problem with that. It's, yeah. and then again, it's like even the people who are screaming and shouting at me that are like, "You're wrong. You're stupid. How you not see this, this, and this?" Uh, I, those people, I don't even need to. I don't think they should be canceled or censored. I'm just not going to engage with them. Yeah, really, that's it. Because you, this is an example that Jesus Christ set up for us. When he was going around and ministering, there were groups of people who rejected him so thoroughly that they picked up stones to stone him. And what does mm -hmm. it say that he did in the scriptures? He departed. Mm -hmm. He he left. He just walked away. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to engage with these people anymore. There's nothing more I can do. I've said what I need to say. They've said what they're going to say. And now they're going to enact violence on me. Yeah, I'm, I'm gone. 
Yeah. I'm out. That's that's the way that Jesus operated, and that's how I operate too. If I, I if I come into contact with that type of mentality. I agree. I agree. Um, this next clip uh, is is continuing along the same lines, uh, and um, then we'll conclude with a final one. It's going to be fascinating. If Satan brought technology, why do people think he's bad? This thing says. <laughs> In many ways, Satan may well be a person, a god, a, an angel, an E.T., who's maligned in a sense. Lucifer is, is Prometheus. He's the light bringer. There you go. He's the god of hard work. He's the one who brings us fire. He's the one who gives us the opportunity to do things ourselves. When we're looking at something like Satan, we're not necessarily talking about morality, but we're actually exploring things about our ancestors. We're exploring mythology. We're exploring accounts of our ancestors saying that they developed civilization, not on their own, but with the help of non-human intelligences. And in the case of one such story, we see that that intelligence is Satan. Hmm, okay, so... Uh, it's like, if I didn't know this was ancient aliens, I would have thought this was, like, some type of documentary put together by the Temple of Satan, by, like, some of their <laughs> most... I seriously would have, by some of the ones who are really obsessed with the UAP, mm -hmm. UFO stuff, and they're like, yeah, let's uh, produce a mini documentary and put it out about how Satan's so great. I mean, like, they are, like, slobbering yeah. over Satan. He's the god of hard work. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> The, the guy who wants to take everything that God created is the God of hard work. No, he's a thief. Yeah. A thief isn't a hard worker. Sorry, I hate to break it to you. The guy who works hard and, and earns whatever it is that he has, that, that's a hard worker. The guy who, who sets out and, and fashions things with his hands, there's a hard worker. The guy who jumps the wall in the middle of the night, takes it and walks away with it, is not the God of hard work. <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Right. It's right. so, so ridiculous. I, I, I honestly, I'm a bit surprised. You know, I don't often get too surprised, but I'm surprised that ancient aliens, what season was this? That they ran an episode like this that is yeah. just so openly pro Satan. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like, it honestly does, it's a little shocking to just see the propaganda laid on this thick. It was like season six, episode five, I think it was. But wow. um, I, it's a I, while ago too. Yeah, yeah, because they're like on season yeah. nineteen or something crazy. Yeah, there's an insane amount of Ancient Aliens episodes. But mm -hmm. what, what I'm getting at with that is, Ancient Aliens has been. It's kind of like a meme. It's it's in the culture. People know about it, and it's a a lot of times people laugh about it and that type of thing. But I've never heard anybody be like hey did you ever see the episode of ancient aliens where they just talk about how satan is the greatest and he's like the savior of mankind and he's all of these wonderful things like, no i'd never heard that what are you talking about and yet here it is sitting in front of me it's just <laughs> wow yeah yeah and even they go wow. and finally they go to revelation to try to prove et the seraphim were sent to earth as benefactors of humankind bringing wisdom the church has created this evil monster out of Satan, perhaps even out of thin air, when in reality, Satan's entire mission was about bringing knowledge and wisdom to humanity, and in fact, caring about humanity, not seeking to destroy humankind. In a sense, Satan's not such a bad guy. You cannot have the light without the dark. You can't have right without wrong. And we have to learn these things for ourselves. <laughs> and ultimately, uh, through choice, wrong and right, we grow and we become who we are. And ultimately, that is to be like our makers, to, to become gods ourselves. Is this over? And is that it? That's it. That's how they ended. Wow. Become... Well, I can thoroughly say that I hated that. <laughs> <laughs> I hated all of it, and um, I'm looking forward to this being one of the things that gets consumed by fire when Jesus comes again. Like all awful. of the archive yeah. footage of it gets just burned up. I can't believe it. Yeah, of course, that was the end, the coup de grace, where they're just like talking about how amazing. Like, I thought it was like <clears throat> blowing the <throat> trumpet for Satan before, but that is just like, wow, he is so. 
amazing. Yeah, those guys are all Satan worshipers, not even covertly at the end. Like they're blatantly, they worship right. Satan. Right. That's it. Like, okay, whatever. Ancient aliens. <laughs> whatever like, it's, that was so ridiculous and uh yeah to say that like satan didn't have any ill designs for mankind you remember when he said "Ye shall surely not die remember yeah, when he right. told that to eve and, and then, then you... said that if you do this you won't die and then she died remember that like what this whole the, the whole thing is just absolutely ridiculous and it just falls apart under any basic scrutiny right. like, i i would trust like the newest Christian. If you sat down and had a Bible study with them on Satan's character, as told in the Bible, you could sit them down with this episode and they could easily go, this is all garbage. Like right. it's insane how it just stands against the entire biblical narrative. And then for them to say that, yeah, revelations is about getting in contact with extraterrestrials. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of right on that point. Right. Uh, they, it's about humanity getting together with the fallen angels who are uh, who have been evicted from their former ha habitation. Ah, uh, so that's that's the long and the short of it. Uh, this uh, this uh, this whole stream was uh, titled. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Oh, I don't have it anyway. It was. Um, make sure I know the name of it. I know everyone's looking at it, going, "Oh, I can see right there." Satan's gift that Christians use every day. Yeah, the gift that we use every day is this amazing technology, and it's not bad necessarily, but it has been a gift, I believe, that it has been um, provided to us, and I, I think it's going to spread the gospel throughout the whole world. Uh, is it a gift, though? Is it really a gift? Because a gift is like given out of love with no strings attached. You oh, know? good point. This is, some, this is something else. It really is. The technology wasn't given just, uh, yeah, here you go do as you will of course that's like satan's line is do as thou wilt but the reality is do as i wilt mm. and let me convince you that you're doing your own thing when you're not yeah. because it's, it's clear you're you're on one of two sides you're with god or you're in rebellion against god and you're with satan that's mm. it and yeah not, nothing that satan has ever provided for humanity was ever for humanity's benefit it is directly benefits him and furthers the rebellion. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it's for. 100%. Yes, sir. That's it. And are we so essentially, we are complete. And so I have to say, Matthew, do you want to say a, a little blessing as we pour out of here? Yeah. Yeah, I can say a prayer. Okay. Father in heaven, I want to pray for anyone who was watching Ancient Aliens and happened upon this episode. Because it really is just full of filth and, and it's disgusting and it goes against you in the worst possible ways and lifts up the adversary as some type of a hero. Lord, I want to thank you for revealing the truth to us through your word, for being good, and everything that you give us is for our own good and furthers our relationship with you. And you have given humanity a gift. You've given the gift of eternal life. There is no greater offering than that. We're just so thankful. Just please also be with the people who produce this. I know sometimes it's hard to pray for people when they're so blasphemous and so openly against you. But really, it's I, I hope that it's just an instance of they, they know not what they do. And I ask that you forgive them and that you draw them closer to you and that they become as passionate about sharing your truth, the objective truth as they were about sharing the lie and the deception that Satan spun for them in Jesus's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Matthew. And I hit record this time. So that's good. And we'll talk about that in the, uh, in the after show folks, Matthew, stick around for a second. We're going to, take a dip out, and I appreciate every single one of you. If you thought that was a kind of a, a chopped up program, I apologize. YouTube is just uh, not happy with us right now spreading the truth, but I hit the record button, so if you want to see the entire thing, join our Patreon. Even for the lowest amount, you'll get to see all that data, uh, all that whole episode, and I'll edit it so it looks nice and it makes more sense than it did here. Folks, 
thank you again. My name is Bradley, and this has been pure strangeness and absolute normalcy. Strange normal. See you later. You're watching Strange Normal, where the truth is the truth.